Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be going through designing print in place and stackable ball joints. So if I look at the section view, I have three different stacked ball joints designed. And my goal is to have these print in place without support uh, or without need for post processing or assembly for that matter. So the reason I'm doing this is because I've printed a couple of these in the past and I've had the issue around this layer when the printer starts to print one of the balls inside of the socket. And what happens is the socket itself um, comes loose and it starts to basically print in midair while the ball is moving itself around inside the socket, causing the print to fail, make a spaghetti failure or dislodge from the print bed. So what I've done here is I've set up three different assemblies, uh, each with a different separation between the ball and lower socket. So on the far left, I have a separation of 0.1 millimeters. Uh, in the center, I have a 0.15. And in the far right, I have a 0.2 millimeter separation. So my initial predictions is I think that the, the 0.15 and 0.1 will probably be the winners. I think the 0.2 might be a little bit too far, uh, far of a gap to print successfully. Um, but that's where we're going to print it. We'll send it off and we'll see what kind of results we get. So the motivation for designing print in place stackable joints is that not only does it reduce the printing time, but it reduces the post processing and assembly. Uh, there's also another advantage you can get from it is that when you design it, you can design these joints so that they are nearly impossible to be taken out. So if you want this design such that you don't want it to be removed and you want it basically a sturdy final assembly, this is a good way to do that because you can design it such that it will be stuck if you try to remove it. If you print them all separately and then assemble, you do have to design for some tolerance where you need to be able to press fit these balls inside of the sockets, uh, which allows you to remove them afterwards. So for the design that I'm working on, uh, this is definitely what I'm wanting and we're going to do some tests for it. So I set these off to the printer and the 0.2 millimeter separation ball joint is at the front of the print bed. And you can see here that near the end of the print, the ball dislodged from its socket because of the separation and caused a failure. So I started the bed off again with the 0.2 millimeter gap removed and just did the 0.1 and the 0.15 and was able to get a successful print from it. All right, so these just finished. So let's see how they fare out. So got the 0.1 here. And 0.15. I already feel the 0.15 break free a little bit. So just a little bit of effort. That comes loose pretty nicely and giving that a good tug and that's very stuck in there. Let's try the 0.1 distance. A little harder to break free, but overall not bad. I'd say it feels a, a little bit stiffer in the joint, but I think overall both of them, I, I would say, have the same result. So yeah, very happy with these, and I think we've got, uh, I think we've got some winning solutions here. All right, so now that we've done our tests, I think that from here on forward, I'm gonna go with the 0.15 when I print stackable ball and socket joints. Uh, I liked the way that it broke free fairly easily; didn't require a lot of force. Uh, and the joint itself was fairly movable. Um, I can predict that's probably because there's minimal contact because of the large but small layer separation here. Um, there's probably enough material in there that it keeps it secured while printing, uh, but not so much that it will become dislodged and be movable inside the joint when you are moving it around. Whereas the 0.1 separation probably has a little bit more material that's connecting the ball and the socket together uh, and when you break that free you're probably going to be left with a little bit more material riding around inside the socket which may create a little bit more friction but again i will let uh, the makers be the judge of whichever one you like to use um, the 0.2 a few times was not uh, was not too too successful um, so i would probably stay away from a 0.2 layer height unless you have something else in mind so in any case that's all i have for you today Hopefully you found this video helpful and you can use it in your future projects. If you liked this video and would like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel and makes me motivated to make more videos like this. So until next time, bye for now and thanks for watching.